Good morning and welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. We're meeting today to consider the draft notice of proposed rulemaking to establish a mandatory safety standard for neck floats. We'll start with an opportunity for commissioners to ask questions of staff. We have several staff present to answer questions if there are any. Joining us today are Zach Goldstein, a mechanical engineer in the Office of Risk Reduction, and Dan Weiss, Assistant General Counsel for Regulatory Affairs. Each commissioner is going to have five minutes for questions and can have multiple rounds if necessary. After questions are complete, we're going to consider any am amendments. And as a reminder, any questions that address the agency's legal authority or other legal advice should not be asked at this time. We're going to move to questions. I'm going to start with myself, and I don't have any questions, but I do thank you for your work on this. Uh, I echo the chairman's thanks for your work on this. I have no questions at this time. Mr. Trump. None for me either. Thank you very much. Commissioner Ball. I don't have any questions, but I do thank you. Commissioner Ziak. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Well, having no questions for you, staff is excused, and we're going to move to consideration of the package. Well, thanks all. Before putting this matter as proposed by staff to a vote, I'm going to entertain any amendments to the motion uh, or motions that the commissioners may propose. Uh, I don't have any amendments myself. Commissioner Feldman, do you have amendments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do. Uh, I would like to call up Feldman 1 for consideration. Uh, I'm going to recognize you to talk about it for three minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, as I've said before, this product category makes me highly uncomfortable. Uh, time after time, the commission has taken strong steps to keep children's heads and necks out of danger. Uh, whether we've been dealing with clothing drawstrings or corded window blinds, we recognize that the hazard of, of infant and children getting caught in something tight around their necks is a serious one. But in this instance, the commission would actually be ensuring that a potentially dangerous product fits tighter around a baby's neck. I can't shake the feeling that this proposal amounts to building a, a, a more dangerous product. And I, I think we should be looking at a ban. Uh, it might take more time and effort, but I think that would be the most defensible and safest solution. A product ban is no small thing, uh, but bans are appropriate where the product is so dangerous or the nature of the hazard is such that a precautionary la labeling isn't enough to protect consumers. Mr. Chairman, I, I have serious concerns that the standard we're considering today doesn't fully address the full extent of the hazard. Uh, we're not going to make these products safer through labeling, and the nature of the hazard is such that I'm not sure that we can make them safe enough with a performance standard. We're aware of drowning deaths associated with slip through, but the FDA is warning against other hazards associated with these products like suffocation and neck injuries. And if the product fits tightly around an infant's neck, uh, of course, we should also be concerned about strangulation. I'm concerned that by solving the slip through hazard, we could be exacerbating other risks. Therefore, a ban is appropriate. My amendment, Feldman 1, would not abandon the 106 approach, but it would direct staff to begin work on a, a package to ban these products under the Federal Hazardous Substances Act. This would be my preferred approach. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss it today uh, from the dais. It's my understanding that Feldman 1 does not have majority support at the time, so I'm going to withdraw it. Uh, but I don't want to lock individual commissioners into a position that would complicate a path to a ban in the future if it becomes necessary. So, Mr. Chairman, it's my hope that we can keep this option in our back pocket if the consensus approach is not successful. We sure appreciate uh, your thoughts and the focus that you put on this. and. Um, the withdrawal amendment, I understand where you're coming from and we continue to look at look at these issues and look to improve safety for, for children going forward in every way possible. Thank you very much. Do you have other amendments? I do. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to call up Feldman Ziak 1. Um, recognize you uh, for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment offers a belt and suspenders approach to the rulemaking. It asks for comment on whether the commission should pursue a safety standard under section 104 for neck floats in addition to section 106, uh, the standard that we're considering today. In doing so, it would open the door to possible commission action under, under 104. Uh, so this may sound like inside baseball to some that are, that are listening, so let me explain. The commission has before it a package that treats neck floats as toys, as contemplated under section 106 of the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. I would like to expand our chances of success by pursuing performance standards concurrently under CPSIA Section 104, which provides the Commission authority to regulate durable infant and toddler products. I want to thank Commissioner Ziak for co-sponsoring this amendment with me. The approach is twofold. Uh, it is possible that neck floats are both toys and also durable infant or toddler products. They're not mutually exclusive. 
We know that industry is likely to challenge a 106 rule on grounds that these products aren't toys. In fact, they're already making these arguments. Are these toys? I don't know. I'm prepared to argue that they are, but the question will ultimately let, be left to the courts to decide when a final rule is challenged, and we have to assume that that's going to happen. Of course, this is untested. We're proposing a novel definition of the word toy. We can probably do that. There's inherent risk to the approach. Are these neck float durable infant products? We're currently regulating other products uh, for bath time under section 104. Neck floats aren't textile products. And we regularly see these products for sale on the secondary market, indicating some level of durability. Is a 104 action without risk? Absolutely not, but it's the prudent course of action that maximizes our chances of success. Seeking to regulate Netflix as a durable infant and toddler products in no way undercuts arguments that we will make about whether or not these products are toys. By confining our rulemaking to toys uh, leaves open a potential loophole that uh, I think we have an opportunity to close. We can argue that products on the market are toys based on how they've been marketed historically, and maybe that'll be successful. But what about new products? It's unclear how a toy standard would be applied to future products and new market entrants who explicitly disclaim their neck floats with not a toy labeling. For me, that raises serious concerns about the effectiveness of a 106 only approach. This amendment, Feldman Z Act 1, preserves options for a final rule that will maximize our chances of a broad rule to protect children. Therefore, I ask my colleagues to join me in strengthening this package and setting the stage for a potentially stronger rule. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Having heard a second, we're going to uh, move to questions and comments from uh, other commissioners. Um, I'll start with myself. <clears throat> First, I appreciate um, the amendment. I appreciate your thoughts uh, behind it and the goals that you're you're trying to achieve. You know, I looked at the package itself. I looked at the way it, the, the definitions are in there and what we're trying to achieve. And I believe that the package is complete as proposed um, and don't really need to rely upon a second provision of our statute to achieve our goals. So I don't plan to support the amendment, but I, I do uh, support the, the, the feelings behind it to be able to make sure that we are comprehensively addressing the risks that we're seeing. Uh, Commissioner Trumka. Uh, thank you, and th thank you, Commissioner Feldman and Commissioner Ziak for for bringing this forward and for thinking through this issue. I do appreciate the thought. You gave us something to think through here. Uh, I largely uh, agree with the description that that the chair uh, suggested, and for the same reasons, I'm not going to support this. But I but I do appreciate the thought that went into it. Commissioner Boyle. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Feldman and Ziak. I also appreciate your thought and talking to you um, uh, leading up to today's meeting uh, and your commitment to these issues. I'm not going to be able to support it. I do think right now that it's um, uh, adequate as written. We'll be getting comments, and I don't think necess it uh, necessarily forecloses other options in the future, but I'm comfortable with the staff package as written, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to support the amendment today. Thank you. Commissioner Ziak. Thank you. I am glad to co-sponsor Commissioner Feldman's amendment to solicit input to ensure that to the extent these products are durable infant products, in addition to toys, the Commission uses its 104 rulemaking authorities. Why do I think this layered approach to this draft rule is needed? First, some industry participants have already told us they do not believe this product is a toy. While the information we have indicates that these products are toys, I'm also concerned that some market participants, especially new ones, could claim the product is not a toy. I believe it's important to provide an alternative means of ensuring the safety of these products in the market and not allow evasion of an otherwise good rule. Our amendment would encourage stakeholders to discuss in detail the applicability of our 104 authorities to ensure that there is no end around what the commission is attempting to do here today. At a minimum, I believe adding the question to this rulemaking preserves the 104 approach as an additional layer of protection in this rulemaking. I also believe it's con consistent with congressional intent, as I would note that bath seats are one of the specific products called out under our 104 authorities of the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. And including these flows under both 104 and 106 authorities is consistent with attempting to adopt safety standards that provide the highest levels of protection against drowning which is the number one cause of death among infants and children. Thank you for your work on this, Commissioner Feldman. I appreciate the views of my colleagues and I yield the floor. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any additional thoughts? I don't, Mr. Chairman, thank you. 
this point in time, we're going to move to a vote on the amendment. Um, Commissioner Feldman? I, I vote know. yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote no. Commissioner Boyle? No. Commissioner Ziak? Yes. I vote no. So with that, the vote is uh, two yeses, three noes, and the amendment's not adopted. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, do you have any other amendments? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to call up Feldman too. Thank you. You're recognized for three minutes. Mr. Chairman, I believe staff has tried their best to identify hazard patterns involving this class of product, but I worry that we have limited our discussion to hazards related to products as they are today, not the hazards that might exist after this rule goes into effect. The new proposed standards could result in alterations to neck floats and new hazards not yet studied. With a loose fitting neck ring, water can drain away from a baby's face. Will the same be true of a tight fitting neck ring or water, water collect around the nose and mouth of the baby? We know that parents might sometimes think the neck floats are too tight around a child's neck and then deflate them, creating a slip through hazard. Will a parent's reaction to a new tighter fitting neck float standard envisioned uh, by uh, the, the current proposal uh, uh, complicate that and the parent might simply not fasten the straps at all? I don't know the answer to these questions, but I hope commenters will discuss some of the other hazards that the new products might pose both currently and as a result of the new standard. I also worry that there are apparent hazards not reflected in the data staff has relied upon. I, I'd like to introduce to, to the record a uh, copy of uh, the FDA statement in safety statement uh, entitled "Do Not Use Neck Floats Due to the Risk of Injury or Death uh, of, of Death or Injury." The statement is dated June eighth, uh, June twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. In that statement, FDA says, "Quote: The risks of using a baby neck float include." Death due to drowning, which we're solving for, but also suffocation, strain, and injury to a baby's neck. The package as drafted addresses the drowning risk, but may not adequately address the risks identified by our sister agency related to death due to suffocation, strain, and injury to a baby's neck. My amendment, uh, Feldman 2, would ask the public for comment on whether the commission should strengthen these performance requirements to address other hazards or whether we should promulgate alternative performance requirements uh, to make sure that this rule is as comprehensive and safe as possible. Thank you. I, I ask for my colleagues' support. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Having heard a second, we're going to turn to comments and questions from commissioners. Uh, start with myself. Um, thank you, Commissioner, for this amend amendment as well. I, I do think you identify uh, areas where we could elicit important information that would help us in the process of this rulemaking. So I plan to support the amendment. Commissioner Trumka. Happy to support it. Good addition. Thank you. Mr. Boyle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I also will be supporting it. I do appreciate your comprehensive look at this, and I think this is a good addition. So thank you. Mr. Ziak. Thank you. Uh, our colleagues at the FDA have suggested that there may be other hazards associated with these products, uh, particularly those related to horizontal forces uh, on the child's neck. I think uh, Commissioner Feldman has offered an important addition to uh, seeking additional comments on those concerns and therefore I plan to support the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Feldman, do you have additional comments? No, I thank my colleagues for their support. Uh, with that, we're going to turn to a vote on the amendment. Um, Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka. Yes. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Ziak. Yes. And I vote yes as well. The yeses are five, the noes are zero, and the amendment is adopted. Commissioner Feldman, do you have additional amendments? I do not, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Commissioner Trumka, do you have any amendments? I have none. Commissioner Boyle, do you have any amendments? No, I don't. Thank you. Commissioner Ziak, do you have any additional amendments? I do not. Thank you. Um, hearing no additional amendments, I'm going to move to approve the draft notice of proposed rulemaking, establishing a safety standards for neck plates as amended. Is there a second? Second. Having heard a second, we're now going to move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? Yes. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Ziak? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The yeses are five, the noes are zero. The draft notice proposed rulemaking establishing a safety standard for neck floats as amended has been, has been approved. And we're gonna move to, at this point in time to closing statements and each commissioner will have up to 10 minutes to do that. So first and foremost, I wanna thank the staff for their work in putting together the strong package. The proposed rule that we approved today aims to address the the deadly hazards associated with neck floats. These floats which wrap around a baby's neck are advertised and marketed as being fun for babies in the pool or bath. 
And the, the package we just approved demonstrates the serious hazards uh, posed by these products. Babies' heads can slip through openings in the floats and babies can drown. Or babies can submerge their nose or, and, or mouth even uh, without slipping all the way through. Pro's rule establish safety standards for these products to prevent future injuries and deaths. And I look forward to reviewing the comments and considering a final rule in the near future. Commissioner Feldman, do you have comments? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I want to thank staff uh, also and again for their work on this package. Uh, but as I said at the briefing earlier this month and again this morning, uh, I do have serious concerns with the approach that we've adopted today. Uh, I voted to uh, support putting the package out for comment. Uh, I think that that's prudent and I, I do want to hear from commenters. Uh, but we had an opportunity today to cast a wider net under multiple agency authorities to ensure our chances of success. Uh, the path that the commission uh, is now on comes with significant risk that we had an opportunity today to mitigate. If it turns out that these products are not toys or if future products are disclaimed as not toys, I fear we're advancing a square peg solution for a round hole problem. I'm concerned that staff's proposal addresses only a fraction of the known hazards associated with neck floats to that end. I am encouraged that the commission adopted my amendment to solicit comments on these risks and how we should address them. I'm disappointed that my amendment to proceed with a ban didn't have majority support today. That would have been the strongest approach. Uh, but as I said today, uh, it is my hope that we can keep this option in our back pocket if the consensus approach isn't successful. Mr. Chairman, I yield the balance of my time. Mr. Tonka. Thank you and, and thank you to staff for your work on this package. Happy that we've moved forward today. Hope we move forward quickly to seeing a final solution on this. It's got me thinking generally, when we look at this product, and this product category and what's happening, it, it just leads me to the general thought that inventors, just because you have an idea for something new does not mean that you should put it on the market. Just because people buy something does not mean that it has utility. Just because it's out there doesn't mean that it's safe to use yet. Um, so I'm glad that we've moved forward to addressing this one. Uh, thank you very much. Commissioner Boyle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I also want to thank Seth again for your work on this. I think a lot of important questions have been raised, and that's why we're reaching out to stakeholders uh, in the comment period. And I think that's going to be a fruitful exercise. So I encourage commenters across the board to weigh in on the issues that we have raised already today. So thank you, and I look forward to that uh, from the commenters and from other stakeholders. Commissioner Zia. Thank you. First, I want to thank our staff for the work they put into developing this draft safety rule. I look forward to the comments that we will receive. This past June 5th, the commission released its annual drowning and submersion report. That report showed that deaths and injuries for children from drowning increased 12% in 2021, the latest data we had. These statistics are tragic, but not new. Drowning remains the leading cause of death for children age one to four. When reviewing commission reports on fatalities, it's rare that a day goes by when a report doesn't include multiple drowning deaths. Every one of these is a life lost and a family devastated. For roughly a decade, I was an American Red Cross instructor trainer, water safety instructor, and a lifeguard. I spent a lot of time around water, teaching aquatic safety and swimming lessons, and doing my best to avoid the unspeakable tragedy of a life lost from drowning. I was lucky. I never had a serious injury during my tenure around water, so I've pulled a, full ch a few children out of pools. I've taught a range of folks how to swim, working with parents and infants to adult swimmers. The one thing I always stress to my students, both young and old, water is a wonderful environment, but it's one that must be respected. It was wonderful to see parents getting their infants and small children in the water to learn how to swim and also learn to respect but not fear water. One of my greatest concerns was always instilling in parents that even with swimming lessons, you can never have a false sense of security around water. When I was a lifeguard in college, I sat and watched the swim team, Ohio University swim team practice. They were a fantastic team. And yet even those excel excellent swimmers had lifeguards. Which brings me to the concerns I have with the product we have before us today. In addition to the concerns that my colleagues have raised and staff have raised about the uh, issue in this, uh, with this product in the draft rulemaking, I am particularly concerned about the false sense of security this product can create in those who use it. 
I'm supporting the proposed the publication of this proposed rulemaking and look forward to hearing from our stakeholders whether whether or not we are doing enough to improve the safety of this product, along with guarding against end arounds. In the meantime, I would ur I would urge all caregivers to never leave a child alone near water. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And thanks to all uh, my fellow commissioners and staff for the work on this, for the thought that they put, put into it. Um, and with that, that concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission.